We spend every day on this program talking about the strength of the U.S. economy, how the U.S. stock market continues to deliver well above what we're seeing here in Europe. When you go to your investment committee and you say, I, we need to invest in France, how difficult is it to make the case for investing in France, for investing in Europe, when the U.S. economy is doing what it's doing right now? Well, you know, basically we are investing in non-listed companies. So uh, the uh, global economy is uh, impacting our investment decision, but mostly we are looking at micro decision, decision on companies and the way they, they behave, the way they, they prosper. And so we are not so much uh, uh, impacted by uh, difference of growth between the, the European economy and the French economy in particular and the US economy. But I, Dominique, I, I take Guy's point and I look at some of the companies that you invest in in France, Fives, for example, which makes um, industrial equipment and has for centuries. Then you look at some of the companies that you're invested in in the U.S., Rodan and Fields, which is a very popular and growing um, uh, 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 skin care line. Um, isn't it easier to get your board behind something like the U.S. business because they're just doing so well, firing on all cylinders. And don't they drag their feet a little bit when you want them to invest in, in Europe, which seems relative to what the US is experiencing a little bit slow? Well, I have to say first that uh, over the last uh, 30 years that I've been investing now, um, we are now considering the impact of the, the trade wars uh, between the U.S. and Europe, between the U.S. and China, and the impact on the, uh, on the business line that we want to invest in. So clearly, this is a new phenomenon that you are obliged to take into account in our investment decision. Uh, <clears throat> but we are investing mostly in the European companies that are uh, selling all over the world. Uh, we are investing in French leaders, European leaders, uh, and we help them to grow everywhere in the world. And so clearly the impact of the, uh, how these trade wars develop will, will be significant in our investment decisions. Dominique, we're just seeing data crossing the Bloomberg. French GDP data is just coming out. France uh, grew 1. So this is an annualized rate, 1.7% uh, in the latest data, and this is Q2 data. What do you make of the state of the French economy at the moment? Is Mr. Macron delivering on the promises that he made about how the, the economy is going to be reformed? Yes, he, he did and he's doing so right now. Clearly, we have a, uh, a French president which is, uh, who is uh, clearly business-oriented and so that helps first France to, uh, to have a better uh, uh, representation in, in the world and it, it creates some dynamism in the decision, investment decisions of the companies that we're investing in. So, yes, we are quite happy with the way uh, this uh, policy, uh, the French policy is developing. What do you think, Dominic, about the, the way prices are developing in, uh, in your universe? I mean, I've seen a lot of um, big industrial companies that wanted to sell assets end up spinning them off or, or following other plans because they couldn't get the price they wanted. On the other hand, we hear so much about how much dry powder is out there in the private equity space. I think $1.7 trillion is a number that's bandied about quite often, which would seem to chase prices higher. How's the price action look from your, from your point of view? Well, the, the, the pipe is, is great, but clearly the prices of, of assets have increased over the last two or three years. But the, the P players in Europe, uh, like in the US in fact, are used now to uh, help the company to create value. So transforming a French leader into a European leader, a European leader into a worldwide leader. And uh, clearly we have to roll up our sleeves much better than 10 years ago to be able to cope with this increase of price of assets. Uh, but the pipeline is good uh, today. Uh, the, the competition is also coming from the fact that the new investors are, are really jumping in. In particular, uh, I'm thinking about the uh, uh, Canadian pension funds who in the past were investing in our funds and now are investing alongside us in companies or in competition with us in companies. So that's also one of the reasons why prices have uh, increased. 
clearly also the abundance of uh, private debt is helping uh, prices to go up. But uh, the, the France, uh, France Invest, the French Venture Capital Association, uh, showed a statistic some, uh, some time ago showing that in the buyouts that uh, are put in place by the uh, French players, uh, the leverage is only accounting for 16% of the value creation. So clearly, the value creation is not coming from the depth of the availability of debt. It's coming from the, uh, the, the hard work that we uh, uh, provide in uh, investing in our companies alongside the management teams of these companies uh, to create value, to, to make acquisitions all, all over the world and, uh, and so forth to deliver the kind of returns that our investors are hoping for around 14-15% uh, ROI.